In this video, we are going to continue with coordinate geometry. You will find this on page 132 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Let's look at another example. A line being a tangent to a curve and a repeated root of an equation. Okay, so let's look at an example like this. A curve has the equation, this is my, it's a parable, and a line has the equation, this is a straight line, where A is a constant. Show that the X coordinates of the point of intersection of the line and the curve are given by the equation. Okay, so basically they give me the straight line, the curve. So if I want to see the combined effect, I must just, just put the one into the other one. And this is basically what I did. And then, so substitute the straight line equation into the curve equation to find the equation that will give the x coordinates of the point of intersection. Okay, so make y equals y. So if I substitute this into this, I get this. And then I'm just um, simplifying it. So take my x, x term, so that's why it's negative 4, and my terms with an output in x, I'm just, and that's what I showed there. So now, for the case where the lines intersect the curve at two points, it's given that the x coordinate of one of the points of intersection is negative 1. Now remember, this is already the combination. So I'm telling you that the one point of intersection, the x value, is negative 1. So I basically just substitute and I get a. Okay. Now as soon as I have a, I can basically put a in. So it's going to be 3. Uh, minus 8, so that's going to be negative 5. And then I can factorize it. Then I will find both points. I will find the negative 1, but also the other point, 5. So x is 5 is the x coordinate of the other point of intersection. And then, for the case where the line is a tangent to the curve at the point. Now, you must go back to nature of roots um, in chapter 1. Find the value of a and the coordinates of b. Now, if it's a tangent, it's the roots are basically equal, okay? So the discriminant is equal to zero, okay? So, so if I put the, this equal to zero, okay? So, okay, now this is equal. This is, this is my discriminant is equal to zero. And then I just substitute. And don't forget what I showed you there. In front of x squared is a, wrap the sign b, the one on the own c. And I sub, and I get a is negative one, okay? Now, as if I say, then I substitute it and I get my equation. So this is the point where, where it the tangent. But if I want to also find the y value, I basically just substitute, but you could have substituted in any one of the equations. But because you have all the values here, put it in the quadratic, there was not the unknown, and it's 5. So the point of intersection will be, or the tangent will be, 2 and 5. So this, this example is bringing a little bit of nature of roots, chapter 1, in. I want you to stop the video and I want you to do example 22. Again, you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Let's start. The equation of the curve, okay, this is my curve, the x is underneath, so then it's not a straight line, and the equation of a line, my line, no, let's just use another color and copy it correctly, okay. Where k is a constant. Find the set of values of k for which the line does not mean meet the curve. Now go back to chapter 1 if you struggle with this. So it is when the discriminant is smaller than 0. And what is the discriminant? It's the inside of this, the quadratic equation, that inside. Can you remember? b squared minus 4ac, that inside. So it's b squared minus 4ac must be smaller than 0. But before you can do that, you first have to make it one equation. Okay, so I'll come back to this. So substitute, let's just make this equation 1. 
So substitute uh, okay, what will I do? I think if I make this one, y is equal to negative x plus k. So substitute equation two into equation one. Okay. And if I do that, I'm going to get okay, so it's going to be two x plus 12 over x is equal, remember the y's is equal, so it's negative x plus k. Now, the best will be not to work with fractions. So put it over 1, put it over 1, put it over 1. Get rid of the fractions. So if I times x, and 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 I times x. So I will get 2 x squared plus 12 equals negative x squared plus kx. Okay, so this is going to be, take everything to one side, 2x squared, I'm just bringing already that positive x squared, plus, oh, no, not plus, it's coming over, so it's minus kx plus 12 is equal to 0. So it's going to be 3x squared, minus kx plus 12 and that will be equal to 0. And now, I, I, actually I could have first write this here but that was just my thinking. So now I bring, so it's the discriminant must be smaller than 0 if there's not a point of in intersection. So don't forget that this is my value of a in front of x is b on its own is C. So if it's going to be B squared, I'm just repeating that. Just get the pink red. So B squared, it's negative K squared minus 4A C12. Okay, and now I'm moving up. So this is going to be K squared. And now, if I'm quickly going to multiply that two, it's going to be 12 times 12, which is a 144, and it's smaller than zero. Now, I, I prefer this also chapter one. You can say it's plus minus, but I just want to show you the sketch quickly here, that you can see it and that you understand. This is a quadratic inequality. So basically, what we usually do is we make it equal zero. Also chapter 1. And then we factorize, so we get k is 144, k squared, and then k is plus minus 12. But don't forget that the sketch is looking like this. And it's positive. So if I'm looking like this, and there is the negative 12, and there is the positive 12. And if it's smaller, oh, check the smaller then it's this. So therefore, k is bigger, and I, usually if there is not an equal, then this will also not have an equal. Okay, so negative 12 is smaller than 12, and that will be, be the, the example. Now we move on. So that's the answer of k. So what is it? Find the set of values for which the dot does not, so in between there. And then in the case where k is 15, find the coordinates of a and b. Okay, so I first have to now go and check what is the original equation, because I'm giving you now k is 15. So I basically can just substitute it in here, in that blue. So let's just go, this is b. So okay, if I'm having 3x squared minus kx plus 12. Remember, I'm giving it to you now. Okay, equals 0. If k equals 15, therefore 3x squared minus 15x plus 12 is equal to 0. And then, oh, just to simplify this, because 3 can divide well. So divide 3, divide 3, divide 3. 
because now you're going to see easier that it can factorize. Let's move this again. Move a little bit up. And if I factorize, uh, just can see. And two and two, oh, four and one. Four and one will work. Yeah. It's four and one because it's positive, so I add up. So it's 4 plus 1 is 5, and the signs are the same negative, and this is x, and this is x. So it's going to be x, the signs are the same, both take that middle sign. Therefore, x is 4, or x is equal to 1. Okay, so basically, um, um, if I'm doing this, now what, what is the value, what, is, what did it ask me? Always go back to the question. Find the coordinates of A and B. Okay, but if I must still find B, I can just substitute it in this equation. What was my... Well, okay, negative x plus k. Why? So don't forget, y equals negative x plus k. Let's just say. Uh, y... Another color. Y equals negative x plus k. But remember, k is now 15. So therefore y equals negative x plus 15. Now I'm going to substitute it in. So I'm going to get y equals negative 4 plus 15. And that is going to give me 11. Or y equals um, negative 1 plus 15. And that is going to give me 40. So, let's just find my two points. So, therefore, A, let's take that the first one, is because it's coming first. So, let's just write it first. 1, if it's 1, it is 14. And so, in the x values, 1 will become 4. And B will be 4 and 11. And that will be my two points. Uh, and then find the coordinates of A and B. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line joining A and B. Okay, now usually I don't... Okay, now I think I can work here still. Now perpendicular bisector, that's actually very easy. I need two things. I need to find the gradient between A and B and take the reciprocal. So let's first get the gradient of A and B. And don't forget, it's, okay, this is x1, y1, x2, y2. Start with y, y on top. So it's 11 minus 14, divide 4 minus 1. It's 11, so it's negative 3, and 4 minus 1 is 3, and that's negative 1. Okay, so perpendicular will just be reciprocal. And different signs of positive one. And midpoint, I must still find the midpoint of AB. We did this quite a lot of times, so it's not difficult. I add the x values, so it's 1 plus 4 divided by 2. I add the y values, 14 plus 11 divided by 2. Uh, so it's 2.5. And then 14 plus 11, 25 divided 2, so it's 12.5. So it's 25 divided by 2. Okay, and now I find the perpendicular bisector. Move it up. Okay, don't forget, um, okay, this is now x1, y1, and that's my value of m. So the per in Particular bisector. And what will that be? That's y minus y1, so it's 12.5, um, equal to m. What is m? Don't make a mistake, it's the perpendicular, 1, and then it's x minus 2.5. So y is equal to x minus. 2.5 plus 12.5 and the perpendicular bisector in this case 
will be so therefore y is equal to x plus 10 and that is the verb in particular y sector make sure especially this kind of question that you have full marks for for this only problem is is if you didn't find a and b then it will be difficult then you will not be able to find this one but usually i think especially in the beginning of the for, of the syllabus they're going to say show that a and b and then use the value of a and b that they are given given to you okay